Father, we just praise you and we thank you, Lord, that you uh, meet with us, God, when we meet together in your name. And we ask you, Father, that you would just uh, bless those that are here this morning, uh, those that may be visiting. I pray, Father, that they would feel welcome today. And, uh, and may we just worship you together today. And may we uplift your name in this place. And God, we just thank you and we praise you, God, for everything that you do. This we ask in Christ's name. Amen. Um, many of you, I'm sure, have seen these new envelopes in the church pews and around. Um, this is the season of our Lottie Moon Christmas auction, uh, Christmas uh, donation, and this goes to international missions. But anyway, in the past, many of you know we've either had an auction or a silent auction where the Sunday schools put together um, Christmas baskets with a theme. Uh, m several of the Sunday schools have done this, and there will be a silent auction next week uh, in conjunction with our Christmas dinner. Um, some of the Sunday schools were not able to do this or didn't want to do it um, for whatever reasons. So our option this year is that you take an envelope and you make your donation and you can make it in honor of someone who is still living and who has influenced your life in some really significant way or you can make it um, in honor of somebody who has already passed in memory of them. Um, if you make one to um, a living person then that person will be presented with a um, card um, mentioning the donation. If it's made in memory of somebody, um, there will be a, an ornament either placed on a Christmas tree or the bulletin board in their name. Um, this year our goal is $7,500. Our hallelujah goal is 8000 And we will appreciate anything that you can do. Thank you. Well, I feel sorry for y'all. I was nominated to uh, read scripture this morning. So, so I'll read a couple of verses Brother Earl's going to have. Between uh, Mark uh, 2 through 1 through 12, I want to read um, one or two verses here that I feel like are pretty important. All of them is really important, I think. It's, it says, uh, Whether it is easy to say to the sick of the palsy, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise, and take up thy bed and walk, but that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sin. Shall we, men, come on up? We'll take up the offering. Looks like we're going to have a treat here this morning with the young kids. Uh, okay. Shall we pray? Father, again, we come to thee, and thanks, Lord. Uh, we thank you for the many blessings you've given each of us and the church you've provided us for worship. We uh, thank you most of all for your son, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Now, Lord, we ask thee to bless the giver and the gift on this, and uh, that all the funds will be go to, um, for, um, to your will. For we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. 
The holidays are a season of celebration. Join with us today as we observe the first Sunday of the Advent season. The word Advent means the coming. Today we begin to remember the coming of Jesus Christ. The Old Testament tells of God's promise to send someone to deliver his people from their sins. Isaiah 9-6 tells us that the promise of the one to come. For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. While the Old Testament tells of the promise of the one to come, the New Testament tells a story of the promise being fulfilled. Follow along with me as I read from Luke 1, 26-38. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God into a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph in the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind without manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth the Son, and thou shalt his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom there shall be no end. Then Mary said unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the high shall overshadow thee. Therefore also the holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her, who is called barren. For with God nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. As the first candle is lit on our Advent wreath, remember the promise that God gave us that a Savior would be born. The first candle is called the candle of promise. Let's all stand. Let's all stand. Could we have the words? First song. Mm, choir, are we ready? Mm. Trials dark on every hand and we cannot understand all the ways that God would lead us to that blessed promised land. But He'll guide us with His eye and we'll follow till we die. We will understand it better by and by. Well, by and by when the morning comes. Oh, 
to the name of the Lord.
There's a place where mercy reigns and never dies. There's a place where streams of grace will dream and lie. Where all the love I've ever found comes like. Devil's already working. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Are you on? Check, check. Hello.
I see prophecies fulfilled And the signs of the times Are appearing everywhere I can almost see the Father I need it. I hope I don't anyway. Oh, here it is. All right. Well, wasn't that good? Yeah. Amen. Amen. If that don't get you started, I don't know what it's going to take. I hope that got you uh, wound up this morning. And, uh, yeah. Well, that was great, wasn't it? I like good. I like good singing, don't you? Uh, am I the only one that likes good singing? Come on. <laughs> Let's let everybody else out there that's listening know that we're here this morning, all right? Amen. 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 Thank the Lord this morning for His uh, marvelous blessings. And uh, boy, that's a, boy, that was just a powerful song. And uh, just thank and praise God for uh, his, uh, his blessings that He gives us each and every day. And, uh, and as we reflect back on this past week, and uh, we, could, we just might as well say God is good to us, because He is. And we've got a lot to thank the Lord for, and uh, 
thank those that are here this morning uh, uh, visiting with us. And we don't want you to feel like a, a visitor. We just want you to feel like uh, you're part of us here at First Baptist. And uh, we're thankful that you're here today. And just, just worship God together with us as if you was at your own home church. And uh, that's, that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to uplift His name. And uh, when, when we do that as a body of believers, God will be well pleased. And uh, we don't need to uplift the singers or the preacher or the deacons or the teachers, but we need to uplift the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. And He said, if I be lifted up, that's what He's saying, if I be lifted up, not us, but he, he said, if I be lifted up, He said, I'll draw all men unto me. Amen. That's what we need to do today. Uh, he's, he's worthy of it, didn't He? He's worthy of our praise today. He's worthy of everything that we would do today to uplift His name. I just want to thank Him today. Take your Bibles this morning, if you would. Let's turn together in, to, again in Mark chapter 2. If you've not found it, be a look in there. Mark chapter 2. We find in this passage that Jesus comes back to the city of Capernaum, which is just, just off the Sea of Galilee, this small town here that Jesus performed most of His miracles. We find... At this, at this little town called Capernaum. And Jesus entered there again here in the passage that we find. And you'll find many places in the Word of God that Jesus performed many miracles there. In fact, He performed more miracles there than any other place that's mentioned in the Word of God. Why did Jesus do that? Well, Capernaum was considered Jesus' hometown according to the Scriptures. And so that's where he lived. And so that's where he performed most of his miracles was there in this little town. Let's notice what the Bible says beginning in verse 1. It says, And again he entered into Capernaum after some days, and it was noised that he was in the house. And straightway many were gathered together, insomuch that there was no room to receive them, no, not so much as about the door. And he preached unto them. I want to tell you this morning, church, that'll get the job done. The Word of God still works. He, he, the Bible says that he preached the Word unto them. And they come unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. And when they could not come nigh unto, the, unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let him down. They, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. But there were certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts. Why doth this man thus speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God only? And immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that he so reasoned within, within themselves, he said unto them, for I reason you these things in your hearts. Whether it's easier to say to the sick of the palsy, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise and take up thy bed and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. And he saith unto the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise and take up thy bed and, and go thy way into thine house. And he immediately arose and took up his bed and went forth before them all insomuch that they were all amazed, glorifying God, saying, we never saw it on this fashion. Father, we just, we just praise your holy name today. We thank you and we praise you, God, for the reading of your precious word. 
We thank You and praise You, Lord, for the wonderful singing today. But God, I know that there's nothing takes place of the Word of God. Father, we're thankful for it. Make it a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Help us, God, just to follow You. Follow these instructions that You've given us in Your manual. And Father, we just praise You today. We thank You, Lord, for the results. And we'll just say to God, be the glory. In that lovely name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Although Jesus had His hometown, his, his town where He lived in this place called Capernaum, it was there in, in this little town here that we read in verse 1 that Jesus made His public announcement that He was the Messiah. He was the chosen one of God that was promised to come. He makes that claim that He would that he was the Messiah. But you know, Capernaum had their problems, just like we do. They had their, their problems. You'll find as you study about this little city called Capernaum, the city they valued their miracles more than the message or the Messiah. You know, uh, I think a lot about this little town where Jesus performed all these miracles. We even find in, in the passage that we read before you this morning that there were sitting in that congregation, there were scribes there. There were people there to try to come and find fault in the Lord Jesus Christ. We find them there in the passage that we read before you in verse 6. There were certain scribes there sitting in the congregation that day. There was something miraculous that was going to take place in this passage that I read before you. And a matter of fact, we find in verse, verse number 12, they said, we've never seen it quite done like that. We've never seen it in that fashion before. I'm sure that they'd probably been in that place before. I believe that it was Peter's house is where they were at. But they'd never seen it quite like this before, how things were transpiring that day. I want to tell you this morning, when Jesus is in the building, things start to happen. Amen. When Jesus is in the building, there will be people there, although they may not just, although they may have just come out of curiosity, there will be things that happen when Jesus is there that's out of the ordinary. I want to tell you this morning that we serve an extraordinary God. I mean, our, the God that we serve this morning, He's unlike the gods of this world. Matter of fact, the Bible says that there's only one God. Is that what the Bible says? There's only one God. There's only one mediator between God and man. And the Bible says that it's Christ Jesus. And here He is a preaching in His own town a message. It didn't take long for it to get get back to the town that Jesus was in the building. Hey, did you know that Jesus is back over at Simon Peter's house? And I believe that the, the as the Bible says that the news was noised abroad. In other words, they started talking about this Messiah that was there at Peter's house, and it, it got so crowded that you couldn't even get in the back door. There was no way of getting into that place where Jesus was preaching. Wouldn't it be great if there was a rumor started here at First Baptist that Jesus, <laughs> that Jesus was in the building? Amen. Amen. That Jesus was in this place? That Jesus was doing things in this place? You've got to go there to see what's happening. Yeah. You just won't believe what's happening there. And here they, these people came by the... I believe they came by the groves, Brother Donnie. I believe that they came by the hundreds to hear this man called Jesus preach the Word of God. The Bible says, as we saw there in verse number 2, the Bible says that He preached the Word unto them. Now it's easy to draw, draw a crowd. They draw crowds all over the place every week, right? 
I mean, it's easy to draw a crowd, but it's what you do with that crowd when you get them there. Yeah. It's what you do when they, when they start coming. Yeah. What, what are you going to what are you going to say to them? What are you going to tell them? Jesus said, "I'm going to preach the word to them." Yeah. Even the Messiah, the Son of God, knew that it was necessary that these people hear the word of God. Yes. Do you know what this morning the the greatest necessity in our life? It's not the miracle that we read about this morning, but it's the message. Yes. from the one that can perform the miracles. Amen. And we find here that the Bible says that he, that he preached the Word unto them. Let's look at Jesus this morning as He's preaching to this crowd. Jesus, He could have performed a few miracles, I believe, while He was there preaching. I believe that Jesus, while He was up, up there in the front preaching, I believe that He could have performed a few miracles and the people would have been eaten out of His hands. Don't you? Oh, He could do that. Oh, He could do that. We, we know that He performed many miracles. And He could have done that this day. But He was up there preaching. But they had, they had problems. These people here, they had problems. And we see that many of them just come... Certain people come and they were reasoning in their hearts. What's going on here? Why is he not performing miracles? You know what? I believe that's the reason that most of them showed up. To see what Jesus would do next. Now can you imagine living in the day that Jesus Christ lived? And all the miracles that he performed. John said if everything was written that should be written. He said I suppose even the world itself couldn't even contain the books. In three and a half years, he done things that was that's not even recorded in the Bible. And these people here, these scribes, they, they come together. Some of them were scribes here. Certain of the scribes, they come and they were sitting there. You know what? They should have got up and let somebody else come. <laughs> the only reason that they come is to try to find fault with the Son of God. I'm reminded in the scriptures before, while Jesus was before Pilate, three times, one of the most intelligent men of the day was Pilate. Three times, Pilate, he said, I, I find no fault in him. You know why? Because there wasn't any fault in him. There, there wasn't any fault in him. He, he was the Son of God. There was, there's never been another one like him. And there never will be another one like him. He was the Son of God. But can you imagine as he was standing there preaching before this crowd, the greatest preacher that, that would ever preach would be the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know what all he said. I don't know what all that he done, but I know that he done something that was out of the ordinary that day. I find here in this passage as... Jesus was preaching. We find that there was those in the crowd that didn't believe He was the Messiah. Notice verse 7. Why does this man speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God only? When Jesus perceived in his spirit, this, would have, this should have let him know who he was. And immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they so reasoned within themselves, he said unto them, Why reason you these things in your hearts? I thought, man, alive, this, 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 this must be the Son of God if he'd said that to me. He said, Why reason you in your hearts? these things. Whether it is easier to say to the sick of the palsy, thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, arise and take up thy bed and walk. We see Jesus here preaching, but I want you to notice Jesus, not only His preaching, but I want you to know it is His power. Right into the middle of His preaching, Something spectacular is about to happen. 
we find in this passage that, that four men, the Bible doesn't record who these men are, but, but we find that four men take their sick friend to the top of the roof. I just want to interject a thought this morning. Serving God's not easy. Serving God is, is hard work. You say, well, it's not. Well, it's because you're not doing nothing. <laughs> serving, serving the Lord is, is hard work. It's, it's labor intensity. Mm -hmm. these, these men here had so much love for their friend that couldn't walk, they carried him up the steps. Why you, you say, preacher, how do you know he, they carried him up the steps? Because the Bible says they took him to the roof. And the only way you can get to the roof is a set of steps. Or some way or another. I know during, during Bible time, back, at, back during those times, there was a set of steps that led to the roof. But can you imagine taking a, a man that, that was limp and couldn't do anything and carrying him to the top of the roof? I want, I want to say this this morning. Most of us, including myself, I would have said, we'll wait till another day. And maybe the next time that Jesus comes to town, you'll not find recorded in the Bible that Jesus ever preached in this house again. This is their one shot. This is their one opportunity to get their friend to Jesus. I want to, I want to ask you this morning, are you using the opportunity that God's given you to get your friend to Jesus? This man was sick. This man needed... Jesus, he didn't need us. He didn't need his friends, but he needed the one that they were going to take him to. And they had enough faith within themselves that if we can just get this man to Jesus, he'll be healed. And they started carrying him up to that roof. I would have, I would have liked to have been there, wouldn't you? I would have liked to have been in the service when they started unfolding that roof. Evidently, they knew where, they could see where Jesus was standing. And they determined when they got to the top of the roof, they started unfolding the roof. They started tearing it off. And I can see wood and pieces of debris falling out of the ceiling. And I believe that everybody started looking up and saying, what in the world's going on? We've never seen it on this fashion before. <laughs> Absolutely, they hadn't. I mean, it was out of the ordinary, wasn't it? And while Jesus was, was there preaching, and we see that the power of the Lord Jesus Christ here in this passage, they, these people here, they, they dared to do that which was difficult. They took this young man to the roof. It, was, it certainly was unusual, wasn't it? It certainly was unusual what they'd done. And I believe that it could have been costly. The Bible doesn't say, but Simon Peter may have had him to pay for his roof. <laughs> Sometimes serving God can be costly. Sometimes serving the Lord can, can be costly. Notice what Jesus said to the man in verse number 9. Thy sins be forgiven thee. Do you notice the power that he has? Did, did you know that he's the only one that can really say that? Yeah. And mean it? Yeah. He says, Thy sins be forgiven thee. I want to tell you this morning, if your sins has been forgiven, it's because Jesus forgave them. Amen. Amen. He's the only one that has the power to do that. Yeah. He's the only one that has the power to, to forgive you of your sins. Yeah. And if you, he's not forgiving you of your sins, your sins aren't forgiven. Amen, that's right. He says, thy sins be forgiven thee. I want to just say thank God. Thank God that Jesus still has the power to forgive sins. He still has the power to forgive us of our sins. Did you know that, that you don't have any power? <laughs> you say, oh, I do too. You don't have any as the old black preacher says, you have zero. You don't have you have zero is what you've got. So yeah, I do have power. 
not according to the Word of God. People get up and they hoop and they holler all the time saying how, how powerful they are. They ought to be ashamed of themselves. According to my Bible in Matthew 28, 18, Jesus said, all power. Now, I'm not very smart, but all, what's that mean? Everything, right? Jesus said, all power is given unto me in heaven and where at? And, all earth, and on earth. So how much power do we have then? According to Jesus, He's got all power. Now God might use you, but we need to never forget that Jesus is all powerful. He has all power. He's the only one that can forgive sins. You see, Jesus in His power, not only that, but I find in verse 11 and 12, I find that Jesus and His proof. And I want to tell you this morning, God don't have to prove anything to us. He's still God. If God never done anything else for us, God never done anything for anyone else, He'd still be God. But God proves Himself. Isn't that amazing? God, He still proves Himself. Not Jesus, Jesus not only claimed to be God, but He proved it. And He said... To the sick of the palsy, he said, Take up thy bed and walk. You know what he done? You know what that old boy done? You know what he done? You, you read the passage, didn't you? Yes, sir. The Bible said that he, that he took up his bed and walked. <laughs> Jesus Christ proved himself that he was God in the flesh. Yeah. And he still is. Yes. He's still God. He's not changed. But I want to tell you, a lot of times we look at the miracle and we forget the messenger. A lot of times we look at the miracle and we forget the Messiah. That's what this crowd was doing in this passage. A lot of the scribes that were gathered there that day, they were looking for the miracle. But I want to tell you, every time that you find something happen in the Word of God, it's the message before the miracle. We like the miracles, don't we? People like to talk about miracles. And I believe that God can perform miracles, don't you? Yes. Don't you? Yes. That's everybody, right? We, we believe that. But if, if, he, if He never performed another miracle, He's still the Messiah. He's still the Messiah. I find in, in John chapter 5, there was a man there. Very unusual. It it's almost sounds like a fairy tale. When, when, the, when a person would come to the, to the pool, there in John chapter 5, the, man, he, the Bible said that he'd been lame for 38 years. Can you imagine that? Couldn't walk. And every time that he would go to a certain season, once a year, an angel would stir the pool. And the first person that went in, he would come out whole. Do you remember the passage? Jesus said... To the, to, the, to the man that had been lame for 38 years. He said, somebody always gets in front of me, God. You know what Jesus says to him? Here's the message that Jesus says. Wilt thou be made whole? Wilt thou be made whole? And then he goes on and he says to him, take up thy bed and walk. That was the message before the miracle. You know what? He was willing to listen to what Jesus said. And he took up his bed and he walked. Can I tell you this morning, church, that Jesus Christ is still stirring the water? Will you be whole? Are you, are you, will you listen to what God says to you? Will thou be made whole? God, he, he wants to save you. He wants to change you. He's still stirring the water today. He proves Himself over and over again. And we, we reject it a lot of times. Maybe you're here this, this morning and you've heard, you've heard the Word of God. You've heard the Bible preached to you this morning. I want to tell you this morning, 
Jesus Christ is the only one that's able to forgive you of your sins. Yes. Amen. He is. And He wants to do that for you this morning. If you've never ex accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, if you never repented of your sins, and by the way, I still believe in repentance. Yes. If the Bible says, except a man repent, he said, they shall all likewise perish. Repentance is acknowledging before God that you're a lost, hell-deserved sinner in need of a Savior. Yes. And you, you turn from your wicked ways and you turn unto Christ. Yes. I still believe that. Do you believe that, church? Yes. We believe that, don't we? We believe that Jesus Christ is the only one that can forgive sins, right? Yes. I want us to stand together. If you're here this morning, you're lost. This would be a good time to get saved. Maybe God is stirring the waters in your life this morning. You realize in your heart that you're not saved. This is your day to ask the Lord Jesus Christ to come in your life and to save you. And He'll do that. Make a new person out of you. Make a new, do you believe that? Do you believe that God makes new, a new person out of people? Yes. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, He says, If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things becometh new. Do you believe that? I believe that, don't you? Yes, sir. I, I'm a firm believer that God changed my life when I was 19 years old. I believe that. You know why? Because I know that He did. I know that He did. Maybe others that need to come this morning. Why we give a, a stanza of, the, of a song this morning. Why don't you come? Why we sing? Oh, to Brother Doc, he's uh, come this morning. He wants to join this church. I spoke to him before service this morning, and he said, I like how you all worship out there. And uh, He said, there's some wonderful people there. He said, I'd like to join the church this morning uh, by a statement of faith. And I said, we, we'd kind of great honor to have you. And I said, you just come forward this morning. We'll give an invitation. So he's done that this morning. And what's the will of the church? That we, uh, we've got sections all over the house. All in favor, all over saying aye. Amen. All right. Thank you all for coming this morning. Uh, take some, take a little time out this morning before you leave, and welcome in, welcome Brother Doc into our fellowship this morning. And we're just grateful that you're thankful that you're here this morning. I hope you enjoyed the service, and uh, just enjoy the day that God has given us. And we appreciate each and every person here this morning. I'm going to ask Joe Bowden to dismiss us in a word of prayer this morning. Lord, we thank you for the message that we received today. Save it, touch someone's heart. Lord, we know that you are the healer. You are the one that would lead us down the path. We really appreciate the things that you do in our day-to-day -day life that keep us together. And Lord, we welcome all to the church. Welcome all to our family. Watch over us this week as we go out our way. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.